And a warm welcome to the glorious Adelaide Oval and the first game in the fourth Chapel Hadley series. It is hot, it is steamy, it is bright here. We are ready for action. And I'm uh, out in the middle with the, the two captains, Ricky Ponting and Daniel Vittori. The match referee, Roshan Mahanama, is out here as well. Ricky, you've got the coin. Let's go for it. Heads is the call. Heads, heads. heads it is. Dan Vittori has won the toss. Yeah, bat. Batting first on a beautiful-looking pitch. Yeah, it looks very good. I think it'll probably stay the same the, the whole way through the innings, but I think any time you come to Adelaide, most teams look to have a bat, and we're just the same. Any interesting team news from your boys? Uh, Chris Martin's coming to the team for Gene Patel. From the side that played the other night, you mean? That's so right. no Patel. Um, you took a, a pounding the other night. Have you pulled up after that? Yeah, not too bad. It was obviously a, a disappointing result. We, we can always take a few positives out of it, but uh, in, in the end, we lost it, and we need, to, we need to regroup and come back in this game. With the bat specifically, huh? Yeah, I think so. They, they came at us pretty hard early on and, and, and we didn't respond that well. Um, luckily at the end, Jacob Warren played pretty well and we've got to realise that we need to give ourselves a chance to give him a chance. You boys have caused uh, a back page and in some papers a front page headline this morning. Tell us what's the thinking behind what you had to say about Sean Tate. Uh, oh, look, I think uh, the fact that I was uh, asked by about six or seven media reporters what I thought of his action and just like anyone in the world, I, I didn't want to comment on it because I don't think it's my place. And uh, in no way are we trying to insinuate that he's, that he's uh, a chucker. It was just, uh, I, I don't make comments on those things. All right, that's dealt with past news. Let's look at present news because we've got the teams for uh, today's game. Firstly, the Australians. Mark Taylor, a place there for James Hopes. And, and good to see Brad Hogg in the side. Very much so. I like seeing Brad Hogg in the side. I, I think he's been the one player who's probably missed out a bit more than I would have liked to have seen anyway. I like to see a slow bowler in there, and Brad Hogg's been given an opportunity uh, at the start of this Chapel Hadley trade. I think it's a well-balanced side. It's just the three quicks, um, but plenty of batting there with Hopes coming in at seven, Brad Hogg at eight, and Brett Lee at nine. Plenty of batting for Australia to chase some runs later on this afternoon. There is Ricky Ponting, and there is that uh, Australian side. I, I think they're going to be very pumped. I think uh, I don't think whoever set up the Sean Tate story has done any favours for the New Zealanders. There's their team, Ian. Smith. I promise he's not coming out the bat today. Uh, but these guys are Lou Vincent, Brendan McCullum, Howe at the top of the order. For me, Mark, that's where the emphasis goes. Daniel Vittori said, if we've got to compete, we've got to bat. They've made a change in that they've left Jeet Patel out, which I think is a shame because if they got 260, 270, they've got a credible total. Patel would have been an asset. They've brought Chris Martin in, who's just there to bowl. So uh, let's see. But the highlight for, for me of the game, or, or the setting up of the game, rests with these two blokes walking out to the middle, Vincent and McCullum. When I said to, um, I had a quick moment with Dan Vittori after the game the other night, I said the other batsmen have got to do their bit in support of Jacob Oram. It, it's a little bit more than that, isn't it? It's taking responsibility all through the top five or six. Mark, there's some very accomplished players. We've all seen them score runs in certain parts of the world. It's just that they're on a downer at the moment. They haven't had... The, time in the middle because they've been dismissed too early. Listen, they were shell-shocked the other night, there's no doubt about this, but uh, Mark, from a batting point of view, anyone that doesn't look forward to coming out and having a hit here, for me, is not worth their price in any cricket side. <laughs> it's a lovely place to bat, the Adelaide Oval. All right, we can go up to uh, the commentary box now and say good afternoon to Richie Benno, to Ian Healy and to Bill Lock. Thank you, Mark Nicholson. Good afternoon to all our viewers. 34 degrees in Adelaide, the perfect day for a one-day competition. Perfect for batting. New Zealand have won the toss. Good fast outfield, good dry pitch, and it should be an exciting game, gentlemen. Should be, Bill, that's for sure. Hi, everyone. 118 matches for Brendan McCullum, and look at that average, 23.74. He's such a better player than that, and he could be one that could prosper here in those conditions. It's him and Oram that seem to bookend this New Zealand attack, and then the others have got to chip in. This man is already over 100 matches. Can he start to play like everyone knows he can, uh, but a little bit more consistently, Richie? Now Bill, Ian, afternoon everyone, or afternoon as it is in um, Adelaide. Two good sides out there, two good batting sides. We've mentioned Jacob Oram, he's going in at number seven and Vittoria at eight, so that is uh, strength in depth. Uh, at the start, they've got to uh, face up to Brett Lee, who will be decidedly quick. Vincent on strike, 142 Ks. Certainly is a good batting pitch. It's dry, 
nice mat of grass. Good toss to win for New Zealand. They took a hammering on the whacker, which was a very fiery pitch on Tuesday night. This will be different. Square of the wicket. There's a lot of runs to be taken. Cut and full shots. Look down this beautiful ground. The old scoreboard away in the distance, the cathedral. Chapel stands to the right. Well, nothing's really different. I was hoping to, to look and see three differences from the 2020 game in Perth. This pitch is not going to bounce through as much as it did in Perth. There's more time to think. The bowlers can't just fire up for three overs. They've got ten to bowl. So they've got to conserve their energy and the small boundaries. Might put the bowlers under a little bit more pressure so they won't fire up. But the tentativeness of the New Zealand top order already on show. Big shout. Not out. Well, it's a very quick little shake of the head there, but uh, it's very nicely bowled by Brett Lee. New Zealand have done the same line of thinking as Australia. They've got Lou Vincent and they've put their wicketkeeper up to open with Vincent, Brendan McCullum. There's Australia have uh, Matthew Hayden. That's just uh, done enough probably to uh, miss Lake Stump. That hit the pad, there was a noise, but didn't sound like an edge, but a very good delivery. It's a bit of a clunk rather than a, a whisper edge. Steve Davis is the umpire. Home umpires can uh, form part of the combination in the limited overs games. Inside edge of the bat onto the pad, I'd say. through four runs much needed just a little bit of width there and threw the bat at it and struck it well it was 149 k's a sharp first time uh, Lee has strayed and given them a bit of width on the offside everything else has been uh, at their body or around about off stump and one of the features of uh, Lee this summer when uh, everyone was worried and quite rightly be worried about the fact that McGrath had retired Lee's the one who's stepped up and has uh, bowled with beautiful control. Four lines. Maybe we buys and a wide call. And five runs, valuable runs at this stage in the third over. Strain down the leg side. He attempted in swinger. Well, uh, he attempted it and was successful. Did swing and then kept on going. Vincent cannot believe it. Where did hopes come from? He's travelled 15, 20 metres. The edge hung in the air. It was wide, it was short, the shot was on. He got it on the outside corner of the bottom of the bat and hopes takes it easy. A great set of hands in Australia. Take their first. One for 16, Vincent gone. I think it's uh, fair to say from what I saw on television the other night that Jamie Howe hasn't played on very many pitches as bouncy as the one in Perth. I must say that was a very good catch. It's not easy to pick up when you're a third man and the guy slashes it, a genuine fastball. 
judged superbly. James hopes he made some ground. Gord just cleans the whistle. I think Lou Vincent looking to go through cover. Gets the outside edge. Couldn't believe that it carried so far. The call went up to catch it. I couldn't believe it myself that it's gone all the way down to Whitey's third man and then hopes takes a dropping catch at third man. And that's the longest part of the ground as well. The uh, oval here in Adelaide is long and a bit thin. Beautiful positioning and clung onto it very, very tightly with both hands. It was nicely judged. Thought it was six. No, I was hoping it was six, but he was hoping to middle it and it would have gone crashing through cover point. Shot. Beautiful shot through the whitish mid-off position. Right off the middle of the bat. Made a lot of shots, Brendan McCullum. He's tried some attempted pull shots. Miss hit a lot of them. He's had a free hit at Brett Lee, and now he's just finding the pace of the wicket okay. Bracken a little bit more width than the over previous to Howe, and McCallum pounces. That's better. He could be out, though. He doesn't quite get hold of it. Oh, it just falls in safely. Hopes was twisting and turning. I thought it was going to go a long, long way, but he mistimed it. James Hopes, half a chance. Didn't quite make it. Got full confidence in his batting lineup, Brendan McCullum. If he gets out right now, he's going to put them all under pressure. And that sort of shot is not going to look good with the coach or his captain. That's better. That's a superb stroke. Racking a fraction short. Hammer it through point. This is what's needed. Big over. Two boundaries and a two, but this is a very good shot. Just too short and too wide, and onto the back foot quickly and superbly placed. Well, that's, well, that's gone back. Helmet four. That run's given. There was certainly some bat in it. That was on to Brendan McCullum before he well, really knew what was going on. And in the end, not only did he get away with it, he got away with four runs as well. And some will probably bounce just a little bit above chest height. That's pretty good delivery. It's well directed, but it's the right idea from Brendan McCullum. Perth, that would probably be whizzing over the top of your head. But here in Adelaide, and, and even I think McCullum caused himself a bit of a problem. I think you'll see that he's buckled at the knees a bit rather than getting up on his toes. If he gets on his toes, he probably handles that better. That's oh, a good shot. That has raced to the square leg boundary. That's the advantage of facing someone with genuine pace. In the middle of the bat on the ball, it flies away. Yeah, he's been leg sideish in this over. Just talking about his improved direction, but this is not a good uh, an over to illustrate that because he's been down leg side, and that's just barely a free hit to even a batsman that's not in terrific touch, but that's the kind of shot that makes Brendan McCullum feel really good. In the air, admittedly, but uh, well and truly away from the fielder just in front of square leg. Oh, that's well hit. It's gone like a rocket. I'm not actually sure if that's a four or a six. Mark Benson's just signalling a four. They just have landed inside the rope. It didn't go very high, but it went very quickly. Well, it's uh, a very good shot in that he was always intending to hit the ball up. So it wasn't a top edge or anything, but he, he dipped as he played it. He got lower. And uh, that enabled him to get the ball up and over. Just held that crouch position and just went deliberately under the ball at pace. Only a foot in it, really, but terrific shot. Stifled appeal, the Australians. Certainly was a noise there, I think. McCallum may just have hit the ground there as the ball went past the bat. Well, the umpire will get a good clue there because the noise was late. The noise was the bat hitting the ground, but the ball had already gone. The ball was well past when the noise occurred, so that's a pretty good hint to the umpire. 
pretty good sign there for Sean Tate, though. Bit of swing there. He's getting that uh, seam in roughly the right place, pointing towards the slips. Through again. Not quite as well struck on this occasion, but it's four more. I talked about the improvement in his consistency, and we, we haven't seen that today. This is more like uh, what we used to see on his off days before. A lot of deliveries down the leg side, a few wides, and he's also giving some widths out, width outside off stump. But McCullum's got the right idea. He's attacking the pace bowler every opportunity he gets. That's over the top. That's four more. It's a good over from McCullum. Three boundaries in it. It's one for 62. That's through. He's away, Jamie Howe. 22nd delivery. He's got it away. He should get three. The run hard. They may have actually get four. They will. Four all run. One of the traits of the Adelaide Oval, if you run well and you hit the ball straight, you'll get to, you might get tired, but you certainly are, have the capabilities of running boundaries. And that was uh, beautifully timed and placed more to the point from uh, Jamie Howe, something he hadn't been doing off Nathan Bracken. It's Bracken himself that has to chase. So uh, now Howe is underway and that'll feel mighty good. It's worth a shout. Davis says no. Jamie Howe does like to get onto the front foot. A fair bit of bounce there on that occasion. It's one of the things that an umpire's got to take into consideration with LBWs in Australia. The bounce. Oh, that's a terrific shot. Ooh. I suppose he's called a half volley from Brett Lee, but it was hammered. Well, I saw Ricky Ponding at uh, extra cover just jump a wee bit here, and I thought for a second it was uh, in his catching sights. But uh, the jump was a bit futile in the end because that raced off the bat that was, in the end was uh, quite well above him. But, man, it was hit with such velocity. Such power. All those players on the offside, right back on the perimeter of the circle for McCullum. And again, same ball, same shot, same result. And that's 50 for Brendan McCullum. Only 44 balls. One for 76 after 13. Just under level out. A little bit risky, a little bit courageous early, but now he should really level out and enjoy these batting conditions. And it has been brilliantly used. How about that? Brendan McCullum has just played a phenomenal stroke. What? Well, he can. He's capable of playing the phenomenal stroke. We saw one at the, the Wacker the other night, the 2020 off Brett Lee as well, where he swayed back, crashed him over point for six. He shimmied to hit it on the onside to put Brett Lee off, and there he just picks it up. What sort of position is that to be in? And somehow he's been able to get it over the rope. Yes, it is a little bit shorter in boundary length here at Adelaide Square, but that is quite remarkable. You see the acceleration of McCullum in that worm. So he's going upwards, he's going this way. And they can afford how to stay going that way. But McCullum at some stage has probably got to level out a bit, and that's when Howe can surprise a few and start lifting his rate. And Australia will feel the pinch. Oh! Nicely bowled. Nicely bowled. Just a little misjudgment of the length by Brendan McCullum. And enough bounce from Brad Hogg, who gets a bit more on the ball these days. He's a much improved bowler from, well, from when he began in the game and then when he first got into the Australian side. That's four. It's short that way, and McCullum gets onto him quick. 
100 arrives for the New Zealanders. They'll be mighty pleased with this start. It comes halfway through the 19th over. The rate's 5.3, they're going nicely. He sprung quickly into that shot. He's so far reading Hogg very nicely. There was a player missed the ball before that, but that was more a length issue. Oh, he gets a little inside edge and he deserves some luck. He's played some great shots. Races away towards the rope. It makes it a four more to inside edge. But Brendan McCollum has set the stage here for New Zealand with some glorious strokes. Come to the crease under enormous pressure. He's played beautifully square of the wicket. And he's given Tater hammering. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Bill. Good afternoon, everyone home. He's played superb, particularly in that three-over burst there against Sean Tate. And you think a little bit wide, he went after. He hit most of it in the middle, too. As soon as Tate's come back on for this spell, first ball, a little bit lucky. He's looking to play aggressive strokes. Another boundary to start. I mean, Jamie Howe's good in defence, but he's got to do something here. He does. Uh, he does have to up the end. He'll be fully aware of that. Well, he's, uh, he's, he hasn't played a lot of cricket at this level, but he's played a lot of cricket. And uh, he'll know that 15 off 49 is, is not what he's sent out there to do but he also knows New Zealand needs some stability at the top of the order they need a big score and they need a foundation to get it from he has the ability later on to uh, to up the ante should he stay for that time so I personally am not that worried at the moment it's better I heard the advice and it's gone beautifully through mid wicket for a full shot the short take dropped it in and Jamie Howe's gone bang he can, he can play those flat bat shots. In fact, he's got all the shots, Jamie Howe. In the past, he's tried to play them so too soon. So, as I say, I'm not that worried about this rather leisurely approach at the moment. You and I were just talking off air, and if you'd have said to Daniel Vittori, you can be one for 113 in the 21st over it. This morning, he'd have said, where would you like me to sign? Gone! Well bowled, well caught. It's two for 115 in the local ball strikes. Maybe for New Zealand, that may not be a bad thing. He yeah, knew that with Sean Tate. Going for a few runs. Just did the last over or two. He's got it right. Jamie Howe couldn't get off strike and eventually he fends at one. It's a good healthy edge and Ricky Ponting rewarded for keeping the slip in. So Matthew Hayden's, Hayden's the man. The the takes a good low catch and a much needed wicket for Australia. Wicket New Zealand now two for 115. Scott Skyris comes to the crease. Good catch by Matthew Hayden, slip. And a very good delivery from Tate. It's online. Just did a bit off the track. Good, genuine nick. Uh, New Zealand's best player, Scott Skyris. Most accomplished. Uh, sizes up a situation pretty well. And at last, sees him coming out to a, a platform here. Mark Taylor hit, hit it right on the head here. How many captains at uh, one for 115 would have had a slip still in place? Easy, easy snaffle there for uh, Matthew Hayden. But uh, in that respect, uh, Jamie Howe was his own worst enemy because if he'd have been a bit more forceful, perhaps, Ponding would have taken slip out. Oh, Threw him. Gone! Well bowled, full length. Genuine neck, and he's got two. Listen to the home crowd. Just what Ricky Ponding would have been hoping for when he brought back Sean Tate. Struggled in his first spell. But now he has back-to-back -back wickets. This is exactly what Australia needed. Classical fast bowling fashion. Rabbit off stump, good length, nice healthy edge. Slip was in place too, but not needed on this occasion. Tate's now got two, and his confidence will be up. Styrus goes cheaply. Out for five, three for one, two, three. Ten balls, Tate. Ross Taylor comes to the crease, a fine player be facing Sean Tate has picked up two valuable wickets for Ricky Ponting and his team this guy's a very good striker of the ball but if he tested here tape his tail up the breeze quite strong over his left shoulder the other end comes not out 76 The end of a very good over from Sean Tate. And the crowd building, it's a very good crowd in. Day night, match at the Adelaide Oval. Tate has two for 43. 
Scott Storis will wonder about this, and uh, when he looks at that replay, he'll realise that the front foot really went nowhere. It's a good batting pitch. New Zealand in a good situation, so he'd be a bit cross with himself that he finally had a platform to work from and did nothing with it. The front foot went nowhere. In fact, uh, he'd be very disappointed with that. It's a regulation sort of half folly. No slip. Ball oh. toss. He goes bang, and he's gone all the way. That's the way to start. Genuine full toss, and he's put it out of the ground. Good start. Well, it is Christmas. Could have put a little ribbon around this one. As he sent it down, Ooh. Ricky Ponning has gone into short point. And uh, really, he could only stand and admire that, but that was a shocking delivery properly dealt with. to make the play. Australia squeezed him for long enough. An exceptional innings comes to an end, fall short of the magic figure. Nathan Bracken is the catcher, and not for the first time, Brad Hogg has done the trick. Oh, what a shame, really. He's played superbly, deserved 100. Hit that right out of the middle, but wanted it to go a lot squarer. He's trying to hit it over extra cover in the end. He picked out Nathan Bracken. But an excellent innings for 96 from McCullum. It's four for 175. And now Jacob Oram promoted above Matthew Sinclair. No great surprise about that. He's got enough time to get himself set if he needs to. And that's important. He played. Typically brilliantly in Perth the other night, as he had done in Perth earlier in the year against the Australians. This is the end of McCullum. Reward for flight there. Brad Hogg prepared to toss the ball up. Ah! Amazing how many players don't pick Brad Hogg's wrong. In fact, it seems like the list is just growing. But he is prepared to to put some flight on the ball. On that occasion, it was spin he was looking for. Run rate in decline at the moment, but there's still a number of overs left. Oh, still best part of 13 overs remaining. That's the the beauty of having Jacob Oram come in at the stage. He has got a few overs to get himself set. It looks to me to be like a player who needs a, an over or two to get the eye in, like in most batsmen. Once he gets it in and finds the middle of that bat, he can hit the ball a long way. We saw that in the 2020 match the other night. Ah! Only 31 balls the other night. 66. This was it. Six sixes and five fours in his 31 ball state. A lot of them went a very long way. The big difference in the innings the other night was there was nothing for Oram to lose. The game had gone, even barring a miracle. And so he just threw off the shackles and let Australia have it. Here, he, he's got to weigh up the situation. Finds it much harder against Brad Hogg. He's not reading him. He'll be feeling the pressure of everybody thinking he's the man. Jacob Oram's the man to get us to 275, 280. This is a much more difficult innings to play than Ooh. the one the other night, even though the one the other night was so dramatic. Ah! Look at this work. Now, I don't think Gilchrist thinks he's got his man. So the umpires aren't going to take the risk. We'll have a look at the third umpire. Well, this is a huge difference from the other night. He's just not picking uh, Brad Hogg at all. He's not confident at all against Brad Hogg. He's got the toe down. So Gilchrist, in having to take the ball, which was spinning and bouncing, then had to get it back to the stumps. It takes a little while, just long enough for the batsman to get his foot down. But there's no way that he's playing Hogg with the confidence that he was playing Andrew Simons. Good stroke. They're going to have to run hard. 
won't necessarily make it to the boundary's edge. Three they get. That's where we are. Ross Taylor has 36. Jacob Oram has just a couple from 13 balls. He's the key figure if New Zealand did get anything really substantial. However strong Ross Taylor might be. A rare loose one from Bradley Hogg. Well, he's bowled two of these for Taylor, and they've both gone to the same area. Just got it wrong. Nice big sort of waist-high full toss, and Ross Taylor's just smashed them straight into the George Giffen stand. And again, this time just four. Blacked and tremendously hard. I'll tell you what, that is a dangerous one. That was flying into the crowd. It really is the skimmer that's likely to kill the crowd. Especially when guys are just sticking their hand out in front of you and you lose sight of it. Someone's likely to be decapitated. Whoa. With that sort of thing going their way, who knows? That's pretty good 50. It's come in... Well, you could say he's he snuck up on us, really. It's come in uh, 48 balls. Some clattering strokes on the leg side, one or two through the offside, but this is a strong-spirited man. He tends to close the face a bit uh, when he looks to hit through the offside, as we just saw there. So he's not getting as many runs through the offside as he should. But uh, the onside work has been very good. More sixes than fours. And now I suspect Ross Taylor will have to go. Sean Tate takes the catch safely. Brett Lee uh, would argue that he's worked his man over and won the day. Clever cricket from the most impressive cricketer. That's a big blow for the New Zealanders. Once again, this is Taylor looking to hit on the onside. Sean Tate uh, takes it in a very strange fashion in the end. Got himself into an awkward position. He's held it, that's all that matters. But uh, the end of Ross Taylor, 450. It's 5 to 197. New Zealand, they have got a good platform, but they need to score excess of 250, you feel. Good batting conditions, it's a quickish outfield, maybe a little slower than we'd normally see in Adelaide. Ian Chappell was talking about the turf being relayed. It's uh, a lot of cricket remaining for New Zealand to get there. Oram's in there, the big hitter, he hasn't got going yet, he hasn't hit a boundary, just the three singles. Sinclair out he hasn't faced a ball yet Falling, George. this was a big wicket but Lee doing the job trying to hit it on the onside maybe a leading edge and the end Tate caught it easily enough well made 50 off just 52 but good piece of cricket by Lee and meanwhile Hulk Bong his final over has done a pretty good job see it's 49 runs but he certainly has slowed down the pace there's the leading edge trying to work it through mid on and Tate judges the catch well that one's in the air hog down in the deep will swallow it so Sinclair in an attempt to get things going for himself holds out how silly was that 40 fourth over you got all at the other end all you gotta do is work the singles and get the big hit of the strike and just hit it straight down and throw to hog you're home and watching this a young player. This is what you don't do in this situation when you're well placed against Australia. Straight forward out, caught it easy enough, and it's gone for two off ten. And all of a sudden, it's six for 201. Yeah, Dan. Daniel Vittori, the captain of the Black Caps, comes to the crease after a reckless shot, you can say, from Sinclair, but it's in the last sort of seven or eight overs, so they've got to press on. Immediately off the mark. And coming back for two, makes it comfortably. Good running. 
I'll get in before you, Bill, because I know you're going to give Matthew Sinclair a, a hell of a serve here, but he'll know. He'll know that uh, this was not on, really. He must have seen Brad Hogg down in the deep there, and that the sensible option was to play along the ground. If New Zealand don't get up here and post a reasonably challenging target for Australia, they really have only got themselves to blame because they've had opportunities to go a lot better. Yes, well, big hitters on strike now, and Hogg's gone. This is well caught, you've got to hold them. Straight down his throat. His tongue's out again, Bill. He cannot get it in his mouth. Yeah. Been a couple of no balls. So a free hit again. Brett Lee is the culprit. He's uh, bowled four and six wides. And in that, there is an indication that he's just struggling a tad with his his health. Two for 46 is a good return. But uh, here's an opportunity for Orham, who hasn't been able to get hold of anything yet. Six singles, no fours, no sixes. Often it can be a wasted opportunity. It's actually Vittori on strike here. Where's he going with this one? Swing and a miss. It's great the free hit, though. The crowd love it. I guess with the front foot rule, the batsman doesn't get a free hit at a no-ball call these days. So I think it's probably a fair thing that if you do bowl a no-ball going over the crease, the batsman gets a free swing, but missed it by a mile. Slow ball, well bowled, well deceived. I think that's the problem with it. All of a sudden, the batsman thinks, oh, I've got a really swing here, and they put a disc out in their back trying to hit the ball too hard and miss it. Here's Nathan Bracken. There goes Nathan Bracken. And that's better, what the Jacob Orm has to do. Five overs to go. They need to get at least 250. That's 10 runs plus per over. Bracken's the sort of pace you'll go for. Didn't quite get that, but got it away for four because he's such a strong man. That one will be an outside edge, running away, running away, boundary, very timely. He's such a tremendous hitter, he went at this so hard, just raced away. It's a good one day shot, and the end. A big, thick edge, look at this, fire through. Tremendous power, didn't time it. Valuable four runs, a big wind up and a fire through there. Would have gone into the city if you got a hold of it. Just can't get under that, so uh, work to do now. Very hard for the big shot to get away, but they'll come back for three. Yes, they do. 48 overs gone now. Six for two, three, three. That's the one through extra cover. So that's a favourite hitting zone. He gets it away. That's what uh, the Black Caps are after. What a magnificent stroke. It was 145 Ks. All the way on the carpet, gave himself a bit of width and went bang. Superb strike. There's the width and there's the strike. Tremendous fire through. It wasn't a great delivery in terms of uh, the plan, and that's why Michael Clark has come across to uh, Sean Tate and said, I, I really think you've got to think about your length as a factor because it gave him the opportunity to do what he liked with it, really. He's hit that one hard. Oh, Michael Clark diving to his left. He couldn't hang on to it. It was a good effort. In and out straight away. It was a magnificent effort. He hit it like a rocket. Judged it well. Dived away to his left. Could have easily held that. There's the hit. It wasn't quite off the middle of the bat, but it went quickly and he made ground and out goes the left duke and down it goes. I'd expect Michael Clark to catch that. He's so brilliant in the field that he would expect to take it as well. Maybe he could have gone with two hands. He thought for the extra distance, I need only one hand, but I think he could have got there with two. But all the ground, all the hard work done. Down she goes. Takes final ball now. Oh, and bowled him. Grabs another wicket. Well, should I say gifted a wicket. Vittori, instead of uh, backing away, runs across his stumps to try and hit it down 
past uh, fine leg or towards the fine leg area and gets wrestled. Three wickets, a good effort from Tate. He was punished in his first spell. He's come back well. He's good pace and not a great shot in the fi final over from Tate. He can do that. He can get it away. It's clean bowl and it's 7 for 241 after 49. Kyle Mills. He should just do the running. Oran with five balls to go. It's 7 for 243. Can he put Brackham out of the ground? That's the question. They need at least another two or three boundaries in this over New Zealand. It'll be a good day for them, 250 plus. Brackham will be mixing up with slower balls, but Oran's after just something short of a good length. And there it is. There's that one gone. Down to third man once again, so a thick outside edge. Well, Kyle Mills is more than capable of hitting the ball over the rope himself. He's a very strong hitter. Problem is, uh, it's very hard to come straight out of the dressing room against Australia and smack it out of the ground. This is for Tory. He actually hit this. This is missing off stump with the swing. It did swing quite late. He played it on. He got it. Uh, he played the shot quite well. The stumps got in the way. He, he did everything right. It just was too far across. Exactly. It was beautifully played. The option was to get across and hit it fine of the man up at fine leg and past the keeper. He did everything right apart from those silly things that got in the way. He's middled it. <laughs> Two hot spots. One off the bat and one off the leg stump. It's unbelievable. Yeah, Daniel, he middled it. That one uh, smash through the offside. What a strike to finish. And that does bring up the 250. So it's Mills crashes a six to finish uh, the Black Caps innings. Seven for 254. Bracken will be disappointed with just giving him that short of a length that times the batsman you need to get under the ball. All in all, that's a pretty good effort from New Zealand. We run down there. It's uh, 96 to McCullum. He was the star along with Taylor. Oram 32 not out and uh, Mills 7 not out with that 6 to close uh, the inning. So that'll take some chasing. If there is some discipline with the uh, all Black Caps bowling, then Australia will have a big job ahead of them. Brett Lee 2 for 48. Okay, doing it tough today, getting over a virus. 3 for 59, Sean Taylor. Good comeback from him given it was no, no wicket for 28 off three, and one wicket apiece, uh, James Hopes and Brad Hogg. The balmy night here in Adelaide. The openers make their way to the crease, the magnificent pair of Gilchrist and Hayden. It looked like New Zealand were going to get to 72.80, but uh, the Australians have kept it to 2.55, the target, and that should be manageable for their batting lineup. Well, two, uh, two great opening batsmen in the limited overs arena. Extended into the test arena as well. Matthew Hayden and Adam Gilchrist. Just the ones who want to be starting a chase with 2.56 to win. Kyle Mills to take up the attack from the cathedral end. Yes, it's a testing time for New Zealand to get it right. A wicket of two early on. Wonderful record for wicketkeeper batsman. And Gilchrist on strike, 255 the target. It's well bowled, goodish length. It's not quick, but you swing the odd ball and mills, probably into the left-hander. Good crowd in here at the Adelaide Over for the first match, the best of three series. Chapel Hadley Trophy. They saw some good hitting, particularly by McCallum. His uh, 96 was a superb knock to wicketkeeper batsman. There's the old scoreboard, the chapel stands, around this Donald Bradman stand, this magnificent ground. There he goes, what a strike of the ball. Four more, so the first over. It's none for ten. There he goes, he gets a thick edge. That's four more. You can break your heart. Adam Brooks, a very unselfish player. Take you on and test matches batting at seven. Comes into the one day games. First ball we, is attack, attack. It wasn't a bad delivery actually from uh, Gillespie. Got what he was looking for an edge. 
but because Gilchrist was driving so hard, ball flew wide of second slip. Third slip might have just had a chance. Oh, glorious strike. Bruno Royce went off all the way along the car. You've got to come up with a change of pace or something. In this sort of mood, you've got to try and outthink the batsman. Big test for the bowlers. Too much width on this occasion and beautifully played. And played on the rise as well. He was nowhere near the length of it, but uh, the timing, the footwork was good. He didn't try to overhit it. But timed it just about perfectly. Oh, down through the off, almost cleaned up Hayden. Adam Gilchrist playing like he's double parked. He's definitely uh, looking to intimidate the bowlers. Just, he's having a bit of problem with his grip, I think. Uh, it's, uh, it's just slipping on him a little bit, I think. Uh, perhaps twisting in his hands, and that's why he's mistimed a couple. Oh, great shot. Superb stroke, power and timing. No wonder the crowds are here. It doesn't get better than this. Two fine players taking up the attack to the new ball. Lots of questions being asked, and at the moment, just looking at his face as he's walking back to bowl, I don't think Mark Gillespie's got any answers at the moment. He doesn't look like a bloke who's convinced he knows where to bowl to, to uh, get one of these batsmen out. That's at least two. Two was the call. They may get three. And in fact, they will. They're superb athletes, Gilchrist and Hayden. Good early call. Run hard. The pressure really on New Zealand. There he goes. There it goes. What a ripper. It's clear the fence. Superb and well caught, well hit. Great stuff, Adam Gilchrist. Well, at the moment, the bowlers have just got no answer to this onslaught. Gilchrist is virtually having a crack at every ball. Well taken. Caught it easy. To promote him to the first. Well, he caught that, he'll already be in the first. Slow ball, there he goes again. And that's four just inside the rope. Talk about wonderful cricketers over the years, none better than this man on screen, Adam Gilchrist. And selfish cricketer, tremendous striker of the ball. He did well to uh, get as much of the bat on that as he did because it was a good slow ball. A lot of players might have played it defensively. Two runs per ball, Lucas at the moment, 33 off 17. At the bottom of the bat, but still in the middle. Well, there's the 50 up, and we're in the uh, fifth over. Australians, obviously, if they are worried about rain, trying to get into a position where they're going to be well ahead of the required score. If it gets to uh, 20 overs, it'll be a match, and they'll uh, they'll claim the points. He's fired the ball into the ground, not at the batsman. The crowd loved it. 
Mills, 2.5 overs, none for 29. No one who's frustrated. He's getting a hammering. The only time he's beat the bat. That's more fine placement. It's not just about raw power or dare or dash. It's also about that rare ability to find the gap. Well, it's a very heavily packed offside field for a reason, because uh, that's the line that he wants Martin to bowl. But it's a slower ball. It's got width. And it's got a lovely length for Gilchrist just to lean on through the offside. Difficult option to bowl at, but the New Zealand have been put under so much pressure that they're trying options at this stage of proceedings that they normally would not try. Four on the ring there and one in the catching position. No slips. What a ball that is! A no ball, a no ball. Adam Gilchrist reprieved, but he gets a free hit at it now. That is the ball of the night, and it earns Chris Martin nothing. No ball is called, just. Bowlers watching will say harsh. Batsman will say it was a fair call. It was a no ball, just. Oh, it would have been a perfect start for Martin. Martin knew. He knew straight away. He couldn't believe it. McCullum had no idea. Had no idea. McCullum threw it so high in the air, he had to go and run after it in case they stole a single as well. Gilchrist never heard the call. He was gone. decent old nudge but the way he's hitting at the moment just it doesn't matter what line that's a foot and a half outside off stump by the time it gets to him and he pounded it onto the roof it's unstoppable stuff he's something special isn't he adam gilchrist 45 off 24 it was uh, a little bit of a sigh at the whacker the other night when he got out early, but it took some catching. He smashes one behind point, it was taken, and uh, the Black Caps know that you've got to take every chance against uh, not only Gilchrist, but all the Australian batsmen. But the run rate is uh, outstanding at this stage. Pure dominance. More thrilling stroke play. It no matter where you bowl, what pace you bowl at. Gilchrist is a master at picking changes of pace. He waits and waits before he hits the ball. He lets the ball come to him and then really, off either foot, hits it where he chooses. Well, he's gone around the wicket to change his line, Kyle Mills. This is the six, right? That's over the wicket. Then he goes around the wicket. And uh, he smashes that one over the top of uh, mid-off. So uh, anything you try... Really speaking, you know, Daniel Vittori, his first one day international in Australia as captain, is uh, under the pump here against a batting duo, which has, well, it stopped most bowling attacks around the world. So he started to bolster the offside again. He's now got five on side at the circle, including, and in fact, six, counting one at catching position just there. And Gilchrist is 50. <laughs> Terrific stuff. Really is. Yeah, you won't see anything more exhilarating than that. He, he really is the definitive batting entertainer. And he's given Adelaide a special treat. And this is where Adam Gilchrist has been hitting the ball. Blade through the offside, as well as the onside, right the way around the park. Mills 
this has a bit of relief. And Matthew Hayden's bit of fun must end. Does that give New Zealand the chance to regroup? Well, it does give them the chance to regroup. Can they make it work for themselves? He advances. It's something that Hayden likes to do. But in the end, the ball slowed up. It come on as quickly as he thought. That's why the return catch was there. And, uh, as always, Hayden disgusted getting out. It's one for 69, Australia. Now, Daniel Vittori has to work things out quick. His bowlers have to bowl to some of the ideas that uh, Vittori's come up with for so long. Stephen Fleming is the man who's reveled in taking on the challenge of the Australians. Now it's Vittori's turn. Vittori's finding out just what a tough ask it is. Well, he has to get rid of Gilchrist because wickets don't make it. Adam Gilchrist changes plan. Not when he's in the mood that he is. One for 70 Australia. Just another look at this. Uh, Kyle Mills just didn't get it a wee bit. Didn't quite come on. Didn't fly through. And Aiden was on the charge anyway. He doesn't run at the bowler, but he walks at him. Deliberately walks at him. And in the end, he just made it a little too difficult for himself. Got ahead of himself. And Mills was grateful to take the catch. And New Zealand were grateful that he didn't overstep. Wonder if he... <laughs> Hayden has gone for 17 from 17. I mean, forgot the fact that he was scoring a runner ball because Gilchrist has got 50 and 26. Just wonder if he, he, he just crossed, crossed the seam there and ran his fingers, dragged his fingers down the cross seam, which scrambled the ball a bit and made it stay in the pitch. Yeah, look. So that's a clever bit of bowling. I was just saying that Gilchrist was so good at picking up the slow ball because he played the ball so late. Hayden wants to get at the ball earlier. It goes a little harder. And it was undone there. Gilchrist, incidentally, has hit six fours and two sixes, and he's on strike. Now, he must surely be out now. He is out. Ross Taylor has a safe pair of hands, and all of a sudden, we do have a different game. Well, he was going to carry on regardless, Adam Gilchrist. I don't think Ponting even bothered to say slow down. We've lost the wicket and regroup. He just had designs here on Chris Martin bowling round the wicket to him again. Around the wicket ploy has paid off. A seam up delivery that Gilchrist has tried to smash over wide mid wicket. Top edge and Ross Taylor. Boy, he hasn't ball followed him while he's been in Australia. Latches on to another one. So Gilchrist goes for 51. It was brilliant stuff while it lasted. It's two for 75. Michael Clark, who's in good touch at the moment, comes to the crease to partner Ricky Ponting, who has five from four balls. We may get an altogether more sedate passage of play, particularly if there's going to be a little movement in the air for the bowlers like that. And Ian Smith can perk up now. This is the, the game has changed very quickly. Two for six, Australia have lost. Here's the second one, Gilchrist. Hammering on like he had done for the 51 runs prior and uh, miss hitting it. So showing his mortal the fact that he got off to a flying start. You don't always hit everything out of the middle. So two wickets go quickly. Now I wonder if it's too high. Well. Oh, did Kyle Mills want that or what? Screaming at Steve Davis, he was. Black Caps know that Ricky Ponting gets across his crease. There's just too much bounce there, I think. Just. Did you have your finger up there, Smithy? I think you did. No. <laughs> no, I didn't actually. Yeah. Uh... I think, you know, obviously very good call. Very good call indeed. What a stroke. What a way to get going. Michael Clark began in the 2020 game in Perth with a splendid off drive for four. I don't think it matched this one, though. That's cover driving of almost legal majesty.
Well, he got a slip in place in the gully as well, so it's almost gone back to some sort of uh, orthodox cricket. Now that Gilchrist is gone, so you just give him a little carrot outside off stump, not a half folly. He's got to drive that on the up. It's a difficult shot to play when you're first at the crease, and bang, perfection. Well, the thing is, now Daniel Vittori can go back to some sort of game plan. It was blown out of the water, as you can see at the start. It was just well, up to 11, 11 and a half and over. And that, as a, from a captaincy point of view, he could do nothing about it. He made a bowling change, but you're really hoping. You're hoping for a mistake. The mistakes came, and he's back in the game. And that's uh, a nice shot down the ground for Michael Clark. He mistimed it, but uh, he just gets there. Five from it, two for 86. Ball this time and the gap is found. That is brilliant front foot play. Well, we saw the frustration of the bowler. Chris Martin just kicking at the ground, realising that he was in a good patch of bowling, just made the slightest mistake, and that's the problem bowling to a player of Ponting's class. You make just the slightest error, and he punishes you. Balance. Balance is so perfect. No movement through the shot or after it. version worked beautifully under the leg side just Clark rolled with it the Lesby frustrations continue at the non-strikers end and Clark gets through I think we just saw there after he delivered that one I think he's trying a lot of things that he he just gets the feeling at the moment in his in his mind that uh, if he makes the slightest mistake he's going to get punished it's bold a slow ball a good slow ball but it's got picked off and I I think Gilchrist has had a bit to do with denting his confidence because he, I thought he bowled particularly well last uh, summer here in Australia. He goes down the ground this time. It's Ponting. They are combining beautifully. Ponting through the covers. Clark through the leg side. Ponting misses the right. The Tories hand just had enough room to squeeze in between rope and ball. And Ponting runs for big over for Australia. Two for 103. Well, the pass score was 71. That's what he would have been looking at. Uh, the um, Duckworth Lewis system. At the end of each over, he would know what Australia have got to be. He may have been a little help written at the bottom as well. Worked under the leg. So Clark's been sent back. Will he hit? No. Trouble if he did. Well, that's what New Zealand really need. They need to make something happen. And that was an opportunity. It's never easy to hit the stumps, but they're the sort of things that can change a game very quickly. Australia look comfortable. All of a sudden, Ponty hits this one really well. Quite rightfully says no. Ross Taylor, if he hits, I reckon Clark's out. And that can change a game. He did pretty well, Ross Taylor. Oh, there's not much of a gap there. Wow. Well, in a way, those two balls are summing up the game at the moment. Ross Taylor with a half a chance, just misses. Very next ball, Chris Martin attempts a slower ball. Ponding hits it for four. The pressure off the Australian batsman, back on the Kiwis again. I think the little chat they were having, Ponting and Clark, uh, Ricky Ponting, 
Just saying to uh, Michael Clark, just settle down a little bit with that running between wickets. There's no, uh, there's no rush. I'm hitting him in the middle. Through again. Two more. You've got to be a high-class spin bowler to bowl with a breeze this strong and still be able to keep the batsman relatively in check. Victoria is very good. It's not going to be very much spin there for him. The breeze will push it on. It's superb. The perfect sweep shot. You see set Michael Clark, he plays all the strokes. It's beautifully played. Which is right, if you're bowling with the gale, you're not going to get much flight or turn. This time, beautifully played. Big stretch forward, all the way up on the carpet. It's a comparison of 20 over stage, and one for 103 in New Zealand. And a two for 127. Back live, and Ponting goes bang into the gap. Terribly played. That's a super shot. He's cued that one early off uh, for him. Wasn't a chance down to uh, deep find Nate, but he waited on that. That's wonderfully played. He cannot bowl that short at this pace. He's got to be up on a good length. I know he's bowling into a gale, but at this level, we're going to be put away all the time. Safe. To stay over back with point. Four more. So it's all starting to happen at the other end. Certainly, when New Zealand and Brendan have come on to play the superb knock against genuine pace. Yeah, he did. His driving through the offside of both feet was phenomenal. He hit two cover drives over Ricky Ponting, I think, an extra cover off Brett Lee that were quite incredible strokes. That was one of them, that was the other of them. Some thrashes, some scythes, some brilliant slog sweeps. Had just about everything, and it deserved 100. It really did. I think that can be a bit of a cliche, but uh, it was a terrific performance. It's two for 135. Well, that's not a bad stroke. <laughs> There's the use of the feet we're talking about. Michael Clark with just a skip down the wicket. Two for 141. Absolutely smashed him. As Ponting's doing now. Smashed him. It's a perfect uh, square drive. He's too short, Jacob Oren. His only medium pace has been pulled on the onside in the previous over. Short and wide, and Ponting is a third player against any type of bowler. Finds the gap beautifully. He's moved to 45 or 46. He was struggling early on, Ricky Ponting, and now he's finding touch. Partnership is now 76 off 103. And for Ricky Ponting, it's another 50. The run machine continues. It just dawned on the crowd. Eh? That's sort of what I meant. It's another one of these innings where. It's all happened with the minimum of fuss. They're fielding a bit of a pump with that most Australian umpire is a bit concerned here. The rain getting uh, slightly heavier. They'll stay out as long as possible. Good crowd in. Yeah, stick it out, guys. No, they're throwing the white towel down. Local umpire Steve Yavis would know the weather here. So the Australians leave the field well faced to 2 1 by 4 in the 27th over. for 157 Australia a lot of talk about the Duckworth Lewis equation that only comes into play if uh, it's rain affected what New Zealand want to see now is that run rate required for Australia creeping up over five and then over six runs and over that in itself will create risks for Australian batting 
in possible wickets. But then when there's shots like that played, Ricky Ponning, sublime. Well, that's just a poor delivery. The field is so set for the offside. They've only got three on the onside, and Ricky Ponning is one of the better players of the pull shot the game has seen. Set in the modern day ga game because he, he just pivots on that foot, that front foot, back foot. He just gets everything hot above the ball, plays the ball down. And if you've only got three on the onside, you cannot protect. Captain cannot protect because he's set an offside plan. So that's basically a gift. And Martin knows it. And that one, he finds the gap through the offside. That'll go all the way, even with the wet outfield. Makes batting look easier right the way through the innings. It's almost like he was sneaking up to 50. And you go, how's he scored that? Then you look down, I mean, now he scored eight or nine boundaries. They're all pure shots. So elegant to watch. Just want to get back to this captaincy issue and Daniel Vittori's effort to try and just stave off proceedings a wee bit here. Do you think, Tubby, you, in all your captaincy experience, do you think uh, had Daniel Vittori been captain for, say, six or seven years, he might have had a better case? Another beautiful shot here from Quentin, just easing it away. I mean, that's just class, absolute class, hitting the ball to areas of the ground in the air where no fielders are not occupied. Third boundary in succession, Martin under the pump. It's, it's a clinic from the Australian captain at the moment. I, I'm not so sure about to answer your question about Daniel Vittori. He, he captain for six or seven years where he had a better case. I, I really think the umpire's a bit like us. They're a bit bewildered about wh why he wouldn't want to go out in the field. Normally, as a captain, you're trying to use a situation to your advantage, but staying off the field, I don't see how that was any advantage to New Zealand at all. When you're that far behind in the game, the only advantage they can get is by coming out and taking wickets. And that one's a nice shot. That's flicked to the onside. It should run all the way. Slowing up, but does get there. Well, 19 off the Martin over is worse by far. Australia in uh, control here at Adelaide Oval. Two for 176. That's a superb shot. It's really just a chip shot. It's kept the knees really bent throughout the shot. The time was well enough to get to the boundary. Yeah, well, it's quite remarkable the positive effect it's had on Ricky Ponning. His average is 46 now, and that's gone up from 41 when he was... Uh, without the captaincy and then you, you look at the Indian cricket team and Rahul Dravid recently said that the main reason for him letting go of the captaincy was so he could concentrate on batting again and re rediscovering that consistency in form he used to always see. Oh, no. That is a great shot. We've seen Front foot shots down the ground, lofted and along the ground. Now we're seeing some touch. Well, you heard the comment from the bowler. Oh, no. And that's how the feeling is out there, I think, in the New Zealand side at the moment. Everything they try, the Australians have just uh, have got an answer for it. Quite a deliberate opening of the blade. Gillespie's been expensive because of that Australian batting lineup. 51 in a whirlwind to Gilchrist. Hayden batted at 100 but got himself out again. Ponting 79. Can someone in this game make 100? 85 balls he's faced. Gillespie continues. Ponting plays a late cut and it hits the ropes eventually. And brings up the 200 uh, for Australia. We saw quite a few times during the World Cup, Australia didn't get too far down the order. Once again, you've got uh, guys like Simons, Hussey, looking as though they're, well, if they do get out there, they're not going to get out there for long, the way this pair's batting. And through. The catch has been the favourite of Ponting's, but he's certainly being dished up some short wide stuff. And and it just sort of snowballs that sort of feeling. And, 
and what happens is then you start to get these sort of deliveries when you when you just can't see your way through that fog and you're thinking oh can't see how I can get this guy out at the moment you don't have that feeling that you can get the wicket then these sort of deliveries come along a little bit full of the outside edge just brings one and then you start to believe or start to think it's cricket I used to love this I used to I used to really enjoy my cricket until I came and played these blokes in dark green And this is why it's hard to be a good player for a long time because you've, you've just got to fight your way through those sort of patches where you feel like everything's going against you. And that's where you need your, your Shane Bonds. He's lofted that and straight to the man on 48 goes Michael Clark. Well, that's the sort of break that you, uh, that you need. Clark hitting that one very, very firmly, but straight to Lou Vincent. A little bit of laid out swing there for Kyle Mills. May have just caused Michael Clark to hit that in the air. So a much needed breakthrough for New Zealand. It's three for 210. Yes, Andrew Simons came into a great ovation. And that's why he's got his average batting in the middle to lower order now moving into the upper order up to 41 he's facing Kyle Mills oh he gets a good one early the loft cutter targeting the off stump well New Zealand certainly needed something to uh, revive their hopes a little late out swing there from Kyle Mills has just caused that one to hit on the outer portion of the bat Short ball, it's spooned in the air. Can he get to it? Yeah, no, he can't. Well, he can get to it. He just can't catch it. He doesn't seem to have any luck at all, Gillespie, with that short pitch delivery. You remember the, the really important one, I think it was at the Wacker, where he bowled a beauty to Ricky Ponting and had him drop an absolute sitter by Franklin. This wasn't a sitter, Jacob Oram. But generally, he's pretty good. He probably didn't have to jump. I think he had it without the leap. That's been the pick of the shots. Around the ground, he's played in plenty of areas of the wagon wheel, but no more dominantly than there. Hit a few of these square drives on the rise. Taking the ball at the top of the rise. Not trying to hit it too hard, just guide it through the fielders. Another swat. He'll take four for it. It's been an entertaining yet scratchy 11 by Andrew Simons. On the seven. Putting on strike. 99, Bill. 99. Ian Smith's just dreaming. What about a Martin Crow? <laughs> I, was, I was just dreaming about seeing my name up there on the Adelaide <laughs> Oval Big Bull, but 99 against the Bull. But oh, look, how often do you have to say how much you admire Ricky Ponting? I mean, it's been a near faultless innings. He wasn't under a lot of pressure when he came out to bat because Gilchrist had really set Australia underway but still he had to maintain the momentum he struck at 100 his fantastic strike rate and he's just he's just systematically taken New Zealand apart really terrific player he's got he's just got better and better keeps setting himself goals and uh, well he's one, one one run away from another milestone here at Adelaide last ball the over there it is what a superb cricketer. His first one day national 100 at the Adelaide Oval. He's 24th and he's fifth against New Zealand. What a cricketer.
strong acknowledgement from all his teammates, appreciating his efforts out in the middle. The return response from Ricky Ponning, something that uh, we've seen for a number of years, really. The players will point at the special people. It'll be these teammates, his wife, is if they're in the crowd, or family members, the batsman will point at them and then acknowledge the rest of the crowd who have been involved in the innings. Look at the strike rates. Lucas 96, Hayden 78. Ponding 80, 82, 93, 90, and 105. Italy's down the bottom. Even Brett Lee and then Brad Hogg. Bracken 78. No wonder they're almost invincible in one-day match. And there's a glorious shot. He's been struggling, Simon's, but not on that occasion. This is a batting feast, isn't it? Lucas 51, Ponding 101. Michael Parker well made 48. Simon's hasn't got warm yet. He's starting to. He's running out of uh, runs to get those 16 for the Australian victory. Grand style. <laughs> How good's that? Hammered it into the ground, flew over the top of point, four more. Crowd stayed up the rain. Good luck to them. So, good hundred. The 250 comes up. Three wickets down. Well, short and wide. A bit of a loosener for Jacob Oram. And look, it just takes a big chunk out of the, the wicket block here at the Adelaide Oval. The big divot and still bounces way above Lou Vincent. It's power. Absolute power. Might be looking over the square leg fence if he drops short to at this pace. A little bit glance. Pick up three. Again, Simo looking after the skipper. Here, skip, you win, get the winning runs. <laughs> Only 105. Simon's 28 at the non-strikers. He shouldn't get another bat or another hit. It's Ricky Ponning who uh, was able to carry on from what Adam Gilchrist and Matthew Hayden had started. Very powerful opening stand. Again at number three, he does the job. Oh, I thought a fine shot. Superb off drive. And get two. Two will count, so that's a big victory. Chasing 255. We've only lost three wickets, 20 of balls remaining, so a convincing win by Australia. 45 balls have really won by so that's a big win. A huge win, and I think it started when they read the back page of the paper this morning. And the headline had a crack at the bowling action of Sean Tate, and I think collectively Australia said, uh, there's motivation enough for us. It became a non-issue as the day went on, but I think it filled the fire early on in the piece. And, Ricky Ponding was noticeably, uh, I think, uh, determined at the toss. He lost the toss. He, uh, he would have batted first himself. New Zealand took it upon them to bat first, and Bill, they did an OK job, that's all. They didn't do enough. Oh, I think full credit to the bowlers. It was very hot. It was 34 degrees this afternoon, and I thought that Bracken, Tate and Lee were special, and Hogg did a great supporting role. And I mustn't forget James Hope. I think at one stage he had about eight overs and up to 28. He did a good job as well. So their attack set it up for the Australian batsmen and they didn't let the side down. And you mustn't forget Gilchrist, 51 off 29. He just blasted Mills and Gillespie all over the park and set up this big, comfortable win here for Australia in the first game of the Chapel Hadley Trophy. We go to Sydney on Sunday. So the New Zealanders regroup and what may be a seeming or turning pitch because there's been plenty of rain in Sydney of late. So Australia win by seven wickets with 45 balls in hand. And now he is hitting him out of the park. Out. Cotton ball. He is out. Absolutely smashed it. Superb. Off the down and straight to the man. Can he get to it? has been another presentation from Nine's Wide World of Sports.